Wake that ass up. LA's number one hip hop morning show is Nick Cannon Mornings on Power 106. Nick Cannon Radio, we going up. It's time for up close and personal conversations. Yes, close conversations with people that I admire, people that are doing their thing, fixtures in the game. And this young lady is all the above and so much more. In the presence of a queen, wow, it's an honor to sit down with the one and only Bria Murphy. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm I'm well. I'm, I'm super excited to sit down with you. One, just because... Uh, I'm a fan of your movement. I'm a, I'm a fan you. specifically of what you're doing in the art space. Uh, and I know that's what we're here to talk about, but just in general because of just how you've always managed to just carry yourself in such a, a positive manner and to do your own Thank thing. You. So uh, I think we could, we could have a, a very interesting conversation, but I would love to yes. start off with talking about your art. And one, how did, you know, that it feels like it's something that, the world has just recently discovered but it seems like obviously based off of the the quality of your work you've been doing this for quite some time so how did you get into art in general well i've always been able to draw and then um i learned to paint well i was introduced into painting when i was 15 but i never took it seriously um uh, I feel like when I met you, I was acting and modeling yeah. and everything like that. So I was doing that for a check. And, <laughs> and I, um, a few years ago, I had to like start self-reflecting and, mm. and really reevaluating what I wanted to do with my life. And um, art was just something that I had continued to do just casually, like as a hobby. I would like create gifts or anything like that so i um decided that that was my passion and that's what brought me happiness so i was like i'm gonna pursue this full time yeah that's dope and like thank you like because I'm, I'm always confused by this when it comes to art because i've like purchased like super expensive art and then i've also like you know found a new artist and and they stuff be dope too and like mm -hmm. the art that's in my house people often are like more impressed by like the stuff i might have bought off of like a street artist mm -hmm. in haiti opposed yeah. to like someone I paid hundreds of thousands of dollars for for a piece. So as an artist and knowing like the value and stuff, one, how do how do you rate your art based off of like the value? And then how does one really even know what's good art? Because yeah. when I look at your shit, I'm like, yo, that shit is fire. Thank you. Like, but how that world, that curating world, yeah. how do you understand that? And then how do you even find it? Where do you place yourself within it? Um, well, personally, I try to rate my work based off of the energy I put into it and how mm -hmm. long each piece takes. Um, I don't want to say like I have a formula for it because I don't. Um, it's just it's a really tricky kind of thing to figure out. And honestly, I price mine kind of high. For As somebody, you should. Yeah. For somebody Get to the bag. Like, <laughs> <laughs> for somebody who's new in the art world. Um, lots of people think that I price my work really high, but um, I I believe my work is worth that. And I believe it's worth more. But um, I'm also about impairing, knowing that self worth. Yeah. I believe that, like, we need to empower up and coming artists. And right. As someone who is new to this industry, I feel like I'm going to do what I want to do regardless of what anybody else says. And you just recently had a show displaying yes. all your art. I was I heard like mad people talking about how dope it was and Thank stuff. You. So so tell me about that. What did was there pressure there? What did you feel like were you nervous? Um I was very nervous, but it was just because I found out there were just a lot of people that I admired that were actually going to show up. Yeah. And um I wanted to deliver, you know, I wanted to make sure that like people came there and enjoyed what uh, me and my team were putting out. And it's also because it was the first time that we're doing this and it's it's supposed to be a platform for the up and coming artists. So mm. even though it was just us three this time, like the next few shows are going to have all like submissions from up and coming artists and it'll be a platform for them to be able to show showcase their work and not feel like they're being um robbed in the process because it, that's dope yeah it costs a lot to get into some of these like major shows so so yeah so like obviously yeah. there's a huge business that that goes into the world of art but if you could describe your art in in what it represents in this space i mean mm -hmm. being a new up-and-comer like what what is bria murphy's art my art is basically well a few things so i feel like my art is 
it's supposed to empower the African American community, mm. and it's also um, it also touches on my little nerd side. Like I love the idea that we did not like human beings did not originate on Earth. Mm. So I really love ancient astronaut theory. So I try wow. to incorporate that into all of my pieces. That's kind of deep. That's kind of cosmic. I guess. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I feel that in a big way, and it, it's interesting even to sit across from you now because you know the first time I was ever introduced to you. You like, and I think even maybe public perception, people don't look at you as necessarily an adult, but you're a grown ass woman. Yeah, I'm 30 years old. (laughs) But I think it's public perception. You know what I mean? Like, I've even dealt with that quite a bit where people think, like, oh, this person's a young person, Mm -hmm. but you know, you've lived such a quality life and, you know, never really been in the tabloids or nothing Mm -hmm. like nothing like that. So I think there's, there's, you know, plus and minuses when it comes to how you carry yourself and kind of remain so private. But mm-hmm. being an artist now, stepping out, you know, in this profession, do you feel like that, like, you're in the limelight, you're doing interviews about stuff like this? Mm-hmm. I mean, not that you're new to it from, you've modeled and acted before, but now as an adult, as a grown woman, displaying yourself out there like that, are you concerned of of not being able to be as private as may that you want to be well i mean i value my privacy but i also understand that um you know if you like it i want my work to reach into people like through pop culture and everything like that so i understand what comes with that and i've kind of just accepted that there's there's parts that like i won't like like i I know that some of my pieces have been a little provocative and have rubbed people the wrong way but you know that's art so um, is that I, a goal I, to like really because you know art is about making a statement so do you want to be provocative do you want to make those statements I, and, I and make, stand firm behind what they represent I want to make people think I don't want to make people uncomfortable but um, you know if I'm making people uncomfortable that means it is being uh, received on some level and people are um, you You're know striking emotion yeah I am so I, I'll i take that where it happens yeah yeah. and then I, I would you know I'm Interested to know because this feels like this is an exciting new space for you. But what's the mm-hmm. ultimate goal at the end of the day? You, you on your like Basquiat like pieces <laughs> costing millions of dollars, or you like? Um, I really want to make art cool again. Like yeah. I, I want people to. Um, I want to kind of strike that interest in people who didn't study art and um and reach out to them because I think that just being able to express yourself is so important and it may not be in the way that I do it, but I want to um, inspire people to, you know, tap into their artistic abilities because we all have our own versions, you know, definitely, definitely. And then, and the idea of expanding and and kind of making that statement of art, art being cool. Mm -hmm. Is this just like one of many things? I mean, because obviously you have a fashion background. Mm -hmm. Is it like what we see like your art kind of be reflected in like a clothing line or is it, you know, there's level of artists. Is it, you know, is we going to be seeing your pieces sprawled on the side of buildings Mm -hmm. or any? Yeah, no, I I want it everywhere. Ultimately, Um, I really want to use my art to um, start speaking up about sustainability especially mm. it's something that's very very important to me um, and I'm still learning about it and I want to teach people while I'm learning at the same time so I'm trying to use that as a platform to you know just speak out about sustainability and promote it as well yeah and so yeah. so you kind of on that run right now in itself like promote like because, you know, we get people promoting music all mm-hmm. the time. We get people promoting television shows and movies. The The promotion process for art, is is that different? Is that unique? Do you find yourselves, like, speaking to a different audience? Like, um, I'm speaking to the audience that will listen, right. basically. Um, I am, I'm really trying to utilize all of my, like, all of the avenues that I have available to me at yeah. the end of the day. It's such a fascinating world to me because, again, like to for it's easy to say for a music artist to get hot. You know, mm-hmm. they got to have a lot of streams on SoundCloud. Or, yeah. You know, for uh, a model to get hot, she got to have a dope campaign mm-hmm. or uh, an actor or anybody in that space. If they got a hot new movie or a hot new TV show, mm-hmm. there's usually a machine behind it. But 
I really I don't know how an artist gets hot. <laughs> like I don't yeah, know how a I'm, painter or is like is that just based off of one person who's curated something and saying, yo, that person has talent or the amount that you're painting a soul for or like or be having a great successful show. Like mm -hmm. what how does one know that they had a successful art show? Like do I they mean, clap at the end. Yeah, I think I think it's a blend of all of those things. So I think that because I've acted and modeled and all of that, I can utilize those um avenues as well to promote myself but i think um like for instance with this show i based the success based like on everything that people were telling me mm. and i got so much good feedback like more than i ever expected honestly because it's hard to pull off a good art show like right. it's hard to get people to come out and hard to get people to purchase work so um, just like I sold a piece at this last show and selling one piece a year as an up and coming artist is a huge deal. Really? So, yeah. Um, you know, just the feedback and the amount of people and the, the quality of people that showed yeah. up, it was just, it spoke for itself. That's dope. So, I mean, the most important question, how can I buy a piece of Bria Murphy art? Like, if you go to artus.gallery, uh -huh. um, and we we actually have So you're going to make me up. go the long way. Yeah, well, I you can, can go I can't, through I can't me, get the hook like, up. Everybody like, everybody else can go to <laughs> artus.gallery. Yeah, absolutely. And then it's just there, and it's all the pieces that were on display. Yes. And then how does that work? Because it's like, obviously, they're one of a kind, so... Mm -hmm. You got to, so there's different like when you ways. run out, you got to get back to painting well, or. Yeah. As soon as the show um, ended, I was like, I have to go and start painting again. And I have pieces, but I still want to make sure that I never run out and, you know. That's so dope. Short. But I'm going to also have prints available for people that don't want to spend as much on a painting because my paintings are expensive. Right. As they should be. Yeah. I'm super proud of you and I commend you, you on your journey. And and this is I mean, this is a outstanding space. So. Obviously, when we have these candid conversations, it's stuff that I'm really intrigued by, and and this is something that I feel like one, I, like I can't say I'm a connoisseur of art, but I've always loved art, mm -hmm. and then to see you in this space is is really inspiring. So continue to do that, but I can't let you leave because you know I got my bulletproof vest on. I gotta put you in the hot seat, give oh, God. give you these fire and squad questions. Oh, it's nothing, nothing you can't handle. You're a grown ass woman, okay, so. Okay. <laughs> These are rapid fire questions. Answer them however you want to answer them. Uh, they some are psychological, some are just fun. Uh, the first one we always start off with, like uh, a Nico Machiavelli uh, type of philosophy. He had this debate about love and fear in individuals. Mm -hmm. So we always ask everyone: at the end of the day, when you walk into the room, how do you want to be known? How do you want to be revered? Is would Bria Murphy rather be? Feared or loved? I can't, I can't say a blend <laughs> between. You the say two. whatever you okay, want. Yeah, yeah. I, I I'd like a little blend between the two because you know I I appreciate um, my space at the same time. <laughs> but um, the respect, yeah, that's where yeah, respect, respect, respect falls what, in line to that fear. Yeah, respect is what I um, you know strive to be when I walk in the room. All right, all right. So speaking of fears, Bria Murphy's greatest fear. Ooh. My greatest fear, I don't, well, this is a physical one. I really don't like free falling. Really? Like, so, at all. So like, like roller coasters, skydiving. I'm very select about my roller coasters. Um, But skydiving, you couldn't pay me any amount of money to ever wow. do. Yeah, I think I would die before I got to the ground. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, best piece of advice you've ever received? Uh, to, my father has always um, ta taught me that, Anything you put your mind to, you can manifest, mm. good or bad. And um, throughout my life, I've seen that come to fruition. So I think that's my greatest bit of advice that I've ever received is to put my mind to things that I really want to happen. Worst piece of advice you've ever received? Ooh. God. <laughs> um, when I was dating, I would, get, I would always get advised to you know oh just hang in there <laughs> oh maybe he's just doing this that that like kind of um uh push to hang on to situations that weren't uh, right. good for me so that those, was, that's that's bad advice that bad advice. but you said you like when you were dating you just yeah. gave up on that like it's just oh, like oh yeah no i'm i'm taken now like, oh okay yeah. so, so then it wasn't that bad you hung yeah. in there no it depends on the person but, like, <laughs> you know 
<laughs> so um, lighten it up a little bit. This would be an interesting question for you. Favorite movie of all time? Ooh, I think Goodfellas. Really? Yeah. You're a Scorsese fan? Yes, indeed. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's fine. I, I don't know if I would have expected that to be your favorite yes. movie. Yeah. That's a, definitely. That's I'm, I'm a huge Scorsese fan. Wolf of Wall Street is my favorite oh, movie I of love, all time. I love, love Wolf of Wall yeah, Street. Yeah, but Scorsese can't do any wrong in my eyes. Yeah. All right. Biggest guilty pleasure. I love popping pimples. Oh, you one of those people? <laughs> do you watch that show? Or like, like, I be... don't watch it, but like I do. I love popping. So like, people. if your boyfriend and like you like yeah. on his back and like, uh, well, specifically blackheads. Oh, uh, you like dig in and get. Ah, uh, you one yeah. of those? Yes, I am. That's crazy. <laughs> All right, so um, most prized possession. My artwork. Great answer. Yeah. All right, so you're on an island. You only could take three things with you. Whatever you want to take is yours, but what you taking? Food. That's one. <laughs> Smart. Guess you don't want and to like grow your own food. You just going to take some McDonald's yeah. with well, you. I need a little bit. I need some snacks. All and right. then um I guess I guess my computer. Okay. Yeah. Man made some art supplies, maybe. Of course, I can make those. Though. Oh, you can make the. So yeah. you you're not going go, you're not going to grow your own food, but no, you're going to make want, art I supplies. Want <laughs> I want some snacks. All uh, right, snacks, computer, and then what was the last thing? Oh, it's three. Yeah. Um. Well, yeah, art supplies. Art supplies. Yeah. <laughs> that makes sense. Good. All right, yeah. one album that you can listen to for the rest of your life. Only one album. You can't listen to anything else. Justin Timberlake's 2020. Album. Really? It's like my favorite that is a great album. album. Ever. That is that album is definitely yeah. fire. All right. Uh ooh, childhood celebrity crush. Michael Jackson. Really? Mm-hmm. You're too young. Like No, I was obsessed and I didn't care what anybody said about it. I was like that was So my husband. then this leads me to my next question, and maybe it's the same answer, maybe it's not. Uh your biggest fan out moment, the time where you met someone. I mean, you grew up around famous people all your life had, yeah. was there any person that made you lose it when you met or you just didn't know how to act when you were around them because i mean like i was that way meeting your father for the first time oh, okay. so <laughs> so so like i couldn't imagine like who who it you might have been michael i was like that probably had to be yeah. I, ne- I had the opportunity to meet michael jackson i never i was such a fan mm-hmm. i didn't want to meet superman yeah, i've no, been in I the was... same room and like vicinity so i i was like Hey Michael, nah, I'm cool. Yeah, because no, I, I just like I don't want to meet Superman. I, I was, was that too. nervous, and I don't. Ne- yeah. I never want. I try to keep my cool at all times. Yeah, I didn't want to like. Ah, I didn't yeah. want to do that. <laughs> so like, how did you? Like, how did you react I was when you too met? young? I, I was didn't like, have you like a choice. Like, yeah. I was there with my parents. So, but I, do you even remember it? I oh mean, yeah, I was just quiet. And yeah, just staring. But that's it. That's not a. Real. That's not a fan out. I moment. don't. I refuse. <laughs> so you've never, out. you've never got out of character for anybody, even as a kid, like, like when Barney came into the room. I've, or I've, I've stuttered and like stuff, but never like really lost it. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I, I understand that because I don't think I've ever really had that yeah. moment. Like I'll go the other way if it's yeah. even. It's funny, like the first time. I met Michael Jordan. Mm-hmm. My grandfather had a fan out moment. Okay. And he embarrassed me so bad that I couldn't even acknowledge. Hey, yeah. then, Michael, bring your ass over here, boy. <laughs> like, and I was like, oh, he just ruined. That prop between Michael Jackson and Michael Jordan probably would be the two mm-hmm. that I would, like, go crazy. And, like I said, your dad, I remember I actually had the opportunity to, like, go over your house and like just mm-hmm. first of all the house in itself <laughs> it was so yeah. impressive i was in all like, i didn't want to touch shit like i was <laughs> like this is amazing and then i remember at the time and the craziest thing eddie murphy said to me he was like yo if my kids knew you was here right now they'd go crazy i was yeah, like no, he, you're eddie murphy he <laughs> like, didn't tell us you were there yeah i don't know when that was that was a long time ago that yeah. was yeah it was years ago He's but pretty chill yeah <laughs> but uh, but it's yeah. just like that type of thing to to even know that eddie murphy even knew who i was like bugged me out mm-hmm. all right so we always ask this type of stuff and knowing about you know your journey mm-hmm. and where you're going and, and someone who is pretty deep in thought we talk legacy one word when it's all said and done that describes bria murphy what would that word be empowering wow yes i like that 
Thank you. And there you have it, ladies <laughs> and gentlemen. This has been a close Cannon's conversation with the empowering Bria Murphy. Congratulations. Thank you.